In today's tutorial, we will be looking at how to create a contact form inside of Divi. Hey, it's Ryan with Optimized, and today we are doing another beginner tutorial going over how to add a contact form. And you know, it's just called a contact form, but it could be any form. Uh, in this particular case, our client is wanting to build out like an application so people could potentially you know, um, apply to work at his business on directly from the website. So I love this idea and it is really not that complicated to do with Divi, but there are a couple caveats. So I wanted to go over those in this video. So like anything else, I'm in the visual builder. So I just navigated to the page. I'm logged into WordPress. I clicked visual builder. That's why it says exit visual builder now. Um, so now I have all my ability to edit this page and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just add a new regular section right here and you can put it in any, you know, format you want, but typically, you know, it's probably gonna be a, a bigger one because of the fields on the form and stuff like that. You need to have room for people to input their values into the fields. So what is, let's go with a half right here for the example. So you're going to go to contact form is going to be the uh, one you want, right? So you get a very plain Jane basic contact form right here. Uh, something to note is you notice these little paint brushes as you're hovering over. If you click on that, it'll take you right to how you would edit that section. So this will take us to the button. So there we go. So if you wanted to change up the styling on your button, you could do so in here. The options are pretty self-explanatory and you can kind of see what happens as you do everything. So I do not like the Captua right there. So that's in elements and I'll just turn that off. Um, let's start with some basic stuff here. I you know, normally, you, know, you don't have to do a background, but we'll do a background here just to make this a little more involved. Let's go with, I'll just go with my purple color here. This is just a demo page on the site. Um, showing some counters is all this is so I'm just doing this on here so if you notice I put my background and you know it's not looking too good with that background so let's do something about that so let's go to design and this is where spacing is going to come in if you click the little link right there it'll add the same amount to the top and bottom so I like to work in 15 pixel increments seems to work out pretty well uh, Divi standard padding is like 30 and 60 so 15 30 45 60 those are basically the paddings um, that I use most often and you can kind of see what's happening as we do this so that you know we're looking better already uh, just by doing that very simply um, so let's go to the form field text and so form field text background color I don't have white as an option in my palette I set this palette um, from the front end so I'll just go to black and then I'll come right here and I'll drag it up to white. So now they're white. I like that. Uh, let's go and let's make this, uh, we'll make that text in there bold. So now it's bold. We'll make the text black so you can see it a little better. And let's make it uh, 16 font or 16 pixels. Okay, so that's that. So that's some very basic um, customization right there if you wanted like borders around your little uh, things right here you can go into border and go like that or you know I could be able to see that but the border width is set to zero so if we make that two uh, pixels or however many see how that works right there so I like just doing one pixel sometimes this adds a little pop to it so we'll do that um, Okay, and something you may want to do, I'm not going to get into that. I was going to tell you how to do a border around it, but that would be actually getting into CSS. We will not do that in this simple tutorial. Let's go back to content. Okay, so let's look at our items on the form right here. So we have name, email, and message just pulls in. So something you need to uh, realize here is this email is set to an email so I clicked on the gear icon you notice you have your gear icon you have your copy and you have your delete are your options right here from this main home screen so I will click on name so field ID name this is uh, for internal use this is what's displaying right here so this happened to be the same uh, that's fine uh, so this is an input 
uh, field. So it can take anything, basically. Characters allowed all, uh, it's required, stuff like that. So that's, this is kind of important because if you made this an email field, it would only accept the form if an email was in there. So it's looking for the at sign and the dot whatever at the end, usually dot com. But just so you know, if you had if you accidentally like copied that email field and renamed it phone number, it would not take that and that would cause issues. Um, another thing is is if you go and put it on numbers only, it will not take dashes. So I just I leave it um, everything. I leave it for all, so they can type the dashes in and it will still send the form because that gets really annoying really fast for the user um, so since we are we're in the settings of name because I clicked right there so now we're just dealing with the name so layout if I make this full width then it's the full width of the form so that is how you accomplish the half width and the full width uh, like so and you can do that for any and all of them like message is like a text box instead of uh, just a single line field here. So if you, if you know they're potentially gonna be writing more than a single line, you know, it might be more convenient to make it a text box like that. Um, so let's go back and show you right here, field options, so that is an email. It just pulls in like that every time. So that's that. You can actually, you know, get kind of crazy where they fill out something, one of these uh, whatever, and then uh, another option would pop up and stuff like that. You also have like check boxes and radio buttons and drop downs. So it doesn't just have to be an input field. They could check stuff off. Um, you know, check boxes is typically they can select multiple check boxes. Radio buttons is, is like yes or no. You can only pick one. Um, the text area is what's going to create this big box right here. And then a drop down's just what it sounds like. You know, they would click on a little down arrow and they'd have a drop down menu to pick from options in that. So <clears throat> I'm not going to get into all that, but I did want to go ahead and just, you know, we'll make this one full width. We'll go ahead and come back to email and make it full width to make it look right. Um, and then let's go ahead and we'll just add a new field and we'll call this like phone number. So that's phone, phone number. So phones, the internal, and phone number is what's populating right here. So say we want that phone number, name, email, phone, like that. So you just drag and drop however you want them. And that's how that works. And then you could add as many as you want. If they're going to be similar, you can just duplicate it. Maybe that would speed up the process or you did some custom styling or something like that. You'd want to duplicate it so you didn't have to replicate your styling for each individual one. So. That is really how simple it is. If you wanted to give your form a title, contact form, something like that, uh, same type deal, hover over it, you get your options, and you know m maybe make that white so it's visible or easier to read, contact form, just like that. Um, you have all your different options as far as like letter spacing and stuff like that. Uh, line heights, just gonna add padding up, up and down. Um, you can add box shadows, which is kind of hard to see on that, but you can kind of see what's going on in the picture right there and play around with that. And yeah, so that's kind of the basics. And then another thing that is really important to note is uh, success message. So maybe you want to say, thank you. We will be in touch ASAP, something like that. Submit button text. Uh, you know, submit form. You know, so you can change what that says right there if you want. Uh, the email, very important. Make sure you put your email in here so it goes to you. So that's my email. If you wanted to put multiple emails, put a comma, type out your next email, and that's how that works. Um, this message pattern is uh, another thing to note. So I'll click this right here and pin my guy over here and uh, let's get my email back in there. Okay, so message pattern. So it has the little help thing. Um, so it's telling you what to do right here, but it is you know slightly confusing. But what it's saying is this is what's going to be in the body of the email that is sent to you when somebody fills out this form. So you're going to want to go something like name to represent name, right? And then the little code snippet to pull that in is 
uh, percent percent and then whatever the the name of it is right here so this one's name so like that like so and then email is going to be email phone is going to be phone and message is message so if you do not do this potentially some of these fields will not show up in your um in the email that's sent to you so it's very important to do this i did not know this as i was getting going this is something i learned uh, a couple months ago so this is is you know super important and another thing is is you're going to want to test your form so after you make a form make sure you run through and fill it out you don't need to actually answer the questions but put whatever values are needed you're going to need to put an email in the email um stuff like that and then click submit and make sure it ends up in your inbox because if uh the forms aren't going through that would be really really bad so make sure that's happening i uh, did not mean to do that but email okay it's still in there uh, redirect is something worth noting so I usually like to redirect people to our reviews page so I don't even know where my reviews page is but if you want to put your reviews page in here instead of typing out your whole address you just you know typically ends in dot com so all you need to do is go slash whatever is after the dot com so dot com slash and then the URL of that page which will be right up here and since this is a draft page it just has the page ID pulled in from WordPress but you know potentially it'd be slash reviews um, and then you may want to consider on the text success message message thank you we will be in touch ASAP you will now be redirected to our reviews page um, and that would just create like a nice little uh, flow right there for everybody so that is the majority of everything um, you don't really need to worry about any of this stuff if you want I'll show you box shadow you can kind of create a cool effect with a box shadow let's go with like this one and we'll make it black oh, they're on the things so eh, not so good I was hoping it'd be around the outside but on the contact forms it's putting the borders and the box shadows around these so just to give you an idea how that works it's just vertical position horizontal position so if we go two and two uh we get like a little effect there which i don't think that looks good but just showing you how that works um and then you really don't need to worry about any of this kind of stuff in here this is more advanced if you're just getting going don't worry about any of that it is not needed and that's that so i will go ahead and save this well before I do that let me go ahead and I'll make a full width section here and I'm just gonna exit out of that because what I'm gonna do is duplicate this so now I have form form but I'm gonna pull this down into this section right here and show you that it's gonna fill up the whole width of that section so that's how it works you can you know move these things around if we wanted to move it over here to the other side and right there so you can drag and drop your stuff, uh, anything, you can do this, uh, bring this guy down like down here. So you can move these things around, you just have to be able to drop it in something. So this is gonna take a module, so we could take that module and drop it right there if we wanted, for example. So just trying to get you a little more familiar with it as we go through this stuff. Um, yeah, so that's that. Then I will test this out and show you what it looks like uh, when you actually use it so to do that I'm gonna exit the visual builder to do my test okay so here we go Ryan email Ryan at use another one of my emails phone number hey okay so submit form and we'll see if this works I just I don't know if it will because it's a draft okay there we go thank you we will be in touch ASAP. I am not sure how to change the color of that text, so that would take a little uh, finagling. Then in my email here, it did. It actually did go through um, in the draft mode, and I thought it didn't because I was looking in the wrong email inbox. But here it is, right here. So um, there it is. Name, you know, input value, email, input value, phone, input value, message. Hey, which was an input value. So that is how that works. Um, here's your little, what you'll get 
as a, a note of what, what that email, that's the subject line right there. Um, so that's how it works. I hope you found value in that. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. <laughs> really appreciate you watching and we will see you on another video.